Yo, what's going on guys? It's Dylan, and I'm back again with my weekly comic book review. Now, if you're new to my channel, this is basically just my weekly pickups, and uh, I'm going to tell you what I thought about them. Now, I'm not going to talk spoilers. I'm going to just tell you my thoughts and whether or not I thought that this was a good issue, and if it's worth picking up or not. And I'll probably uh, tell you my pick of the week. And, you know, it's looking like this might be a longer video because it was a big, another big week. And, you know, just another uh, good week in comics. But we got a big title that came out this, a couple big, big titles that came out this week. And one of the big ones is we got the record-breaking Spawn issue 301. There were so many good covers, I had to pick it up twice, and I ended up messing up uh, and not getting that parody cover. Otherwise, I probably would have got that, but I thought that the parody cover was the A cover for 300, and I didn't know till last minute that Todd McFarlane was doing his own A cover, and I ended up just getting that. So, I had to get this one, you know, to go with it, plus Perry Comics was, you know, talking about how cool this was with the crown and him stepping on 300 issues, and I like that, you know, and I figured, you know, I gotta show support for McFarlane because he has always been one of my favorite uh, comic book creators, I've always loved the way he did with Image and the whole revolutionary uh, back in the 90s, um, Plus, I'm a 90s kid, so I, I got a soft spot for Jim Lee, McFarlane, all those guys. Mostly McFarlane. He has always been my favorite. Spawn, when I was a kid, I don't care how crappy it is nowadays, but Spawn was amazing when I was a kid. The movie I'm talking about, the live-action one. Um, also, you know, had to get that Alex Ross cover. This was actually all I was going to order. I ended up ordering this one last minute. But, uh, yeah, the story, basically, uh, if you've been, if you keep up with Todd McFarlane, you know that 301 is picking up right where 300 left off, and, uh, man, it has been, it's been, I've liked it. It, I know a lot of people have been saying, uh, it's been nothing really worth talking about, but I think it is worth talking about, and I think Todd McFarlane, maybe not, maybe these issues haven't been, some crazy a lot of insane things happen which i don't know what the if they that may have been 300 maybe because i feel like he's been setting up a lot of stuff and 301 there is the first couple it panels i thought were amazing like what he you know you're like oh my god where's the story gonna go next but i will not get into spoilers on this one i enjoyed it though and i am really excited to see where uh he's gonna take it next that next cover that hell hunt part one i am pumped to see where he's going you know maybe you uh were like oh this you you know i don't think like with most of these big stories like you know detective a thousand or marvel a thousand it's like really just like it's they try to like do like one story each panel or something like this is more of him like starting up a new story arc in my opinion you know because you know 301 is leading right into the new story arc of hell hunt but um yeah i enjoyed that and i had to show support and buy that at least twice um next if i could have a pick of the week it probably would either be this or spawn 301 and um this was amazing. Powers of X issue six were finally done and over with with the Hickman, uh, you know, powers and uh, powers of X and House of X uh, storyline. And now we're gonna be going into Dawn of X Men, and I am really excited for this. My I I'd probably put you know put these up on my wall. So uh, you know it looks also like he's getting a new artist for uh, Dawn of X, but. Psh, Man, I, uh, I'm super excited to see where that's going. I, uh, you know, let me know if you guys are picking up all those new titles that are upcoming. Um, or if you're just picking up a couple. So far, I'm just down for the regular X-Men story and then the New Mutants one. Because Jonathan Hickman is also writing that. So I really wanted to just stick with those two. But, you know, I, I'm on the fence. Maybe I should pick up a couple of those other titles just to give it a shot at least. You know? Um, but yeah. This I won't give any spoilers either. But this was amazing. And 
if you're watching this, you're either reading this or you're not. And you know how good this issue was because, uh, well, you know how good this series has been because the whole series has been game changing. And I am so excited to see what he's going to do next in Donna X. But, oh, also, I got this True Believers, you know, the, uh, the little Dark Phoenix Saga uh, storyline from back in the day that Claremont. I forgot to show my True Believers issues I picked up last week because I always grab the uh, True Believers. Uh, you know, every time I see them, I, oh, I have a soft spot for those dollar books. But uh, next, we got Absolute Carnage tie-in, Amazing Spider-Man, issue 31. Now, I thought this issue was a better than the uh, previous issue. I did not. That one was really just, you know, if it seemed like if you weren't reading that this was a catch-up. And it's like, I've read all these issues, so that it seemed, you know, it was just a filler, a cash grab issue to me. But Ryan Otley and Nick Spencer are on these, and I, I enjoy the artwork, and this issue was a lot funner. And I really like that it feels like that this is, you know, the amazing Spider-Man, you know, uh, getting brought into that absolute carnage world. Not like, more like that it's absolute carnage pulling them into their world because they still have that centipede like character in this that and he's been the villain you know lurking in the backgrounds uh in the whole amazing spider-man run so he's also in that too but yeah i enjoyed that issue a lot better than the last next i got invaders issue 10 now this series uh the first series arc i really enjoyed chip sidarski you know everyone's been raving about him but this uh, second arc is starting is starting to wear thin on me. I actually read issue nine and ten back to back because I was uh, I was behind, and issue nine I didn't like really at all. But this one was a lot better. But still, there's just like something about it that's wearing thin on me, and I'm not really you know I love the flashbacks between you know namor and cap and all of them when they were back in the war together but you know just something about you know everything going on with namor i'm not really feeling it but it, i uh i still did have enjoyed it for the most part but like i said it's wearing a bit thin on me um next miles morales spider-man issue 11 now this series uh i've enjoyed a lot um this story, basically, you know, it's another one of those. He's speaking from, like, his journal. Um, basically, like, he's done the whole series. And, uh, you know how this story ends. I'm, interest I'm interested to see where it's going to go. But I read so many Spider-Man stories, you know. Start Some of them start to wear a bit thin at times. But this was one of the better issues. Um, a little bit slower. But, uh... Yeah, I hope then it looks like this is more of a setup for the next issue. So I'm excited to see what happens next issue. Um, next, we got Age of Conan, Valeria. Now this one, nothing. I'm just a sucker for the Conan story, so I've been picking this up. But probably will stop picking up these little side Age of Conan stories after this. Um, beautiful cover. Meredith, Meredith Finch has been doing a great job on it. You know, this is a story that most people wouldn't care about at all, but I've I've uh, I've enjoyed it. I would have dropped it after issue one if I didn't like it at all, but the story has been pretty good. But it starts to wear thin around issue three because you feel like that this story might only be like it only should serve a justice of three issues. But you know, Marvel extends makes them extend it to five. But I pro um. I really enjoy all the regular Conan stories, but yeah, the best part about this one was probably the cover. <laughs> Next, um, I, Amazing Fantasy, the facsimile reprint. Um, I've absolutely loved these facsimile reprints, you know, getting to read and just have like the cover of these old classic stories is fantastic and I love it. And you know, if you uh, if you like those too, if you want to ever read those stories, it's nice to be able to. So, without having to pay, you know, those crazy prices, which, you know, you'll never get your hands on if you don't have a lot of money. Um, this was last week, but I finally got the cover I wanted in, and so I switched that A cover out. 
Ghost Rider, the uh, King of Hell variant. Yeah, I just wanted to show that variant off because I, I really, I think this cover is beautiful. I thought, I, you know, in my opinion, I just thought it was better than the A cover. And, you know, that wraparound cover would have been my next choice, but I thought that that would have, you know, went better. Next, um, this is from a little bit ago, but finally I got issue one in this week. And I got issue two last week, so I was able to read these back to back. And that is Batman Superman, issue one. Now this story, I couldn't, can't believe I passed up on it because it, it's fantastic and it's just completely fun. And um, I am excited to see where that it goes next. So I, yeah, I might as well just show them both off because both these issues were, you know, a couple, you know, the last couple weeks. But uh, yeah, it really enjoyed this and I'm really glad I went back to pick this up. So if you can, uh, if you passed up on it, you can actually still uh, get both the covers, the uh, Superman and Batman. So if you're, you know, if you passed up on it, maybe ask your comic shop to see if you can order it, you know. Also, grab the Watchmen uh, dollar comics. Had to grab that for a buck. Hell yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to read that. Next, we got my first thing I read. And uh, probably, uh, this, I, I can't believe I forgot about this because um, this was the first thing I read this week. This was really good. The Joker. The Year of the Villain, one shot, but written by John Carpenter. And actually, you know, man, when I ended up opening it up, sadly, um, it's written by John Carpenter and Anthony Birch. So it's not just solely written by John Carpenter. It looks like he had a little bit of help. So it's like, really, how much did he end up writing? But for some reason, when I was reading this book, all I was like, I was just like, I kept feeling like it was like, almost like hinting at, like, almost like John Carpenter had read or had uh, watched, you know, the, the uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker in a way. I don't know. It just felt like that this Joker was like that. Like, kind of weird and goofy, but, uh, I really enjoyed it. And I definitely, I, I haven't been picking up any of these Year of the Villain one-shots, but when I heard John Carpenter was attached to this, and, I mean, it's the Joker, you know, but once I heard John Carpenter was attached to this book, I had to. And I really enjoyed it. At first, I was starting to read this, and I was like, oh, man, this is kind of confusing. But, um, it picked up, and I, I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Next, we got Event Leviathan, issue 5. Now, we got one more issue, and the funny thing I have to mention that I uh, mentioned in probably the issue 4 review, or I did a review on one of these issues, and I said that I guarantee that they, in this mystery, they're not going to reveal Leviathan until the last issue. And, yeah, basically, the next issue... Uh, it said when it says at the in in the back it says Leviathan revealed. Like jeez man. I don't know if that's a spoiler right there saying, you know, issue six Leviathan will be revealed by then, but I don't know. Um next uh we got Detective Comics ten thirteen. Now this was amazing as always. Um I can't get enough of this Detective Comics. Now we got Mr. Freeze in this issue, and it has been just such a joy. And we get a lot more of Mr. Freeze in this, and it was just absolutely a blast. Next, more Batman. The Batman's Grave, issue one. Um, this, um, I, I hear there's a lot of Warren Ellis and, like, Brian Hitch fans. The artwork was amazing. The writing, um, I thought was really good when I checked out the previews. But it just kind of lost me towards the end. And um, I don't know if I'll be picking up issue two. I read a lot of Batman as it is. But um, I had to check it out at least to see how see if it was anything good. I would not say it was bad at all. I might have to reread it and see, you know, and see if I can make sense of the uh, ending. But it just kind of lost me at the end. And maybe it's supposed to lose you at the end. But kind of either way, I might be just trying to find myself an out. Because I, uh, you know, don't want to add this to the poll because I read so much Batman and I just have so much on my uh, poll list as it is. But it still was a decent issue and I think it was worth the read. 
and I definitely think if you're like fans of the artwork artist or the writer that's definitely worth the pickup next we got wonder twins issue eight now this was just a fun wacky kind of uh, issue um like always just super fun and love the artwork and the, this cover was actually really nice um but yeah that one is just super fun you either love wonder twins or you don't you know but last but not least and i actually did not get a chance to read this because i am behind a couple a few issues on this but i will be catching up on it very soon the flash issue 80 um williamson has been killing it for freaking 80 issues man that is freaking give the guy a freaking round of applause just for that like come on that's a big reason why i picked up batman superman is because of williamson because he's been slaying it with the flash um yeah can't wait to catch up on those I finally uh, just got done with Justice League, so I actually can do Justice League Dark next, or I can do The Flash next, and I'll review either one of those. So, let me know what you guys thought about uh, the reviews. Let me know what you guys picked up. I'd be really interested to know what you guys uh, grabbed at your local comic shop, if there's any indie titles maybe you, you guys picked up today and liked. But yeah, if you guys hit that like uh, button, hit the subscribe. Be on the lookout for more content coming very soon. Alright, catch you on the next one guys. Peace.